I, I think through through because uh, I'm a skilled person mm -hmm. through repetitions. What I've heard and what I've learned is that through repetitions, a skilled person can become an expert. And mm -hmm. I feel in my own little world, I'm an expert because I don't make many mistakes now. Mm -hmm. you know, Fifty over fifty years of creating work. Yeah. Uh, and, and to put things like this, it doesn't take me long, yeah. you know, because I've been doing it for, for you know, over 50 years. Yeah. So this is the end, end result of the process. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, Fifty-three years with with the city of Monterey, and I retired. But then uh, I'm I'm one of the folks who's left with the programs that were started uh, in, the, of course, in the in the early '60s. I came along in '63, wow. so that one cutting day horticultural program is still still going. 
So I'm the only one left. Everyone has passed away. So I had, had a great, great, great opportunity. I was raised on Alvarado Street in downtown Monterey. I, I was a, a shoe shine, uh, shoe shine boy, shining shoes. Uh, and, and because I was on my own, probably since I was about nine years old. So uh, my father worked. Uh, he was a professional chef. <laughs> he was a chef for the USS Lurling, Matson Lines, uh, sailing out of San Francisco to Hawaii. When he'd come home, then he, he would work in uh, the restaurant industry here on the peninsula. And he opened up, uh, he was the first chef for the Rapa family at the end of the wharf. And then uh, he worked at quite a few places. And then it, it, he'd go back and forth. And so I, I ended up going to about seven grammar schools because of the visitation with my parents. And, uh, so, but it was it, it, it was a, a learning process. Overall, it, it, it it's been good. I had uh, parents uh, were were great, but I, I'm from a, a divorce uh, divorce folks. We met in high school, my 16th birthday. What a birthday present, huh? <laughs> that was, yeah, and there was, we had, my girlfriends had a party for me, and um, I guess I'd met him a couple weeks before, and he came, he was at the party, and we got acquainted, and it seemed to work out pretty good. We got a place in their yard, and I have a place in my yard in the front there, where it's a growing area, and you get the seedlings, you put it where it wants to be. Then you dig, you train it, and then you dig it up. The transition is easier. Check check the thing out, man. You know, because I don't use no wire. Uh, this is a, uh, you know, this art originated in China. Uh, it's a Japanese art called it originated in China, and I don't use no wire. All I do is I cable things, and put things in between to, to shape it because uh, I pay attention. I pay direct attention. There's two types, indirect and direct. But I, I pay direct attention. So then it, it, it makes me be a little bit more thorough and understand process and outcome. So that's the, that, that, that's the mental recall of the process. You know, and again, you know, like paying attention. But I had this burning desire, Robert, just to do this stuff. And then one thing led to another. I had 400 at one time. This one here, 30 years. I planted, I planted it on this here, mm -hmm. and, and I was looking at a, a root extension over uh, over stone, and then, and eventually it, it lives off of the stone because it could sort of break into the crevices and stuff. So I have an opportunity to to work with, with with living things, and of course then I have an opportunity to work with things that have just been around for a long time. But I think uh, it gives me a, a chance to uh, trade off because of the process of my thinking process. I'm sort of monkey mind, so I can work on these for a while and then switch over and work on my, on my, uh, in my studio, on my uh, sculpture pieces. But it was it, it, it was a, a learning process, but uh, I found out that my academics weren't really uh, anything to to be proud of because I was just a mist, you know. And I ended up uh, being an, an industrial arts student when I got to high school, <clears throat> and I was also an, an outstanding athlete. Uh, I was a football player. Not very big, but the time I played varsity, I, throughout my years, I had uh, 15 touchdowns in four games. Held a lot of school records. I uh, was, was a track star. Uh, had uh, the uh, league records there. It's because we have those memories. 
from far back, you know, in high school. And we can talk about that all the time, and we keep in touch with a lot of our friends from high school. So that makes it nice. So we always have connection with before. And a lot of them came down for Ray's 50th retrospective. So that was an honor that they would do that. Of course, having an opportunity to work for the city of Monterey is probably one of the biggest things. I started my career in 1963. Uh, I'm a veteran, so uh, I went to uh, MPC for about 10 years, basically uh, looking for a job in enrichment, uh, learning uh, the different skills. And then uh, I, when I first started with the city, I was the maintenance worker in the jail. And then uh, through uh, an opportunities, I became uh, the uh, uh, parks di was in the parks division, and then I was a maintenance uh, worker one, and when maintenance worker two, a lead worker. And then I became the the supervisor of of the east side of town, which covers uh, Del Monte, Fremont, uh, beaches, open space, Iris Canyon, lake restoration, fishing programs. So, uh, you know, I bought into it, you know, and I talked to a lot of the folks now and then they go, shit, Ray, I don't think, I don't, I don't know how you did it, but, you know, I, I tell them that, listen, you, you, you need to understand if uh, nowadays it's different, you have to have some type of higher education, uh, create opportunities for yourself and uh, try to get along, you know, try to get along because it's very difficult uh, to have jobs where you can have a retirement and raise your family and, and, and buy a home. When we were going through it, it was hard for us, too, because once Ray would get a payday, because he got paid every two weeks, 
we would pay the bills and sometimes we would only, and get food, we would only have $2 left. So, till the next payday. And I, I don't think kids could manage that way today because they do have a lot more access to money. So, you know, again, my mantra is always pay attention. Just pay attention and then uh, it, it, seems, it seems to work out. And then I even step back and look at it and say, you know, wow, especially pieces like this because just look, you know, and then there's the other side and, and, and these guys uh, are, are, are fantastic. Look at this. And they don't, they, I couldn't get them in, in California anymore. I got them up in San Jose at an oriental shop. Mm -hmm. and, and he says, I got, you got any more? He goes, Ray, we can't get them. They we outlawed them or something. And they're, they're just models of, of these beetles. But uh, see, and this is a female elk from Alaska. This guy brought this for me. And the thermite has a head shop, and these are all things that are broken. He gave me, he gave me all these parts. I've lost a lot of friends that were helping me, and they made all these things in stands, all plugging in and so it makes it sort of interesting to, to have it, you know, and to actually show it and share it with people. I really want the viewers' eyes to dance as they look at the work. I've always been an artist, and it was, it was because I didn't have an education level. But because I was an athlete, I figured out that they wanted me to continue to, to, to play on the team, be part of the team. And a lot of parents, uh, a lot of sleepovers with other people who had a lot more money than I have. But I always had, uh, you know, been taught to have good manners, how to say please, how to say thank you. So with those uh, adults that uh, were guiding, uh, guiding myself, and they were excited about the, the Friday night games, and, and watching my uh, uh, ability to to go ahead and uh, you know score these touchdowns, you know, I think overall my record was like a. Uh, uh, 1,900 some more yards that, uh, that uh, I gained, you know, and it was another halfback. We had over pretty close to 6,000 yards, him and I together. So it was just a, a, a great, uh, great opportunity, and, and, and life has been good. It is, it yeah. is like a dance, and yeah. it's what's so nice, like just as a good dance is it's, um, it all works kind of like its own synergy. It doesn't feel distracting. Right. Yeah. It right. kind of well, brings well, you together. Yeah, and, and then you and then you, you, you continue continue to, to wonder and think. Ray Maxwell, what, what what's you know what is it? It's like you're asking. Yeah. That. So I have an opportunity to sh to share it with folks. And this piece here is, is one that's very old too. Not
I'll just want to say that they're about 25, 40, 30 years old. But wow. And, and remember Edward Scissorhand? You sure do. Here he is. Here he is right here. <gasps> oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, so that's Edward Scissorhand, you know. And, and a lot of kids go through their adolescent period and discard their toys. But I do mental recall with their toys. So I could see them and talk to them that, I, I remember that, you know, then they educate me. I remember this, see, because they, they know about that. And, and I just, I, 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 I've seen this before, but not in my lifetime as yeah, a child. Right. But, uh, children have all these action figures and they know about it. But now they've discarded that yeah. and they're adults. So now I end up with some of their, yeah. and do mental recall. And then some you people know. come in here and find a level of joy and meaning in your work right. that you now, didn't even think about. Now some of it, I have, I have little things that are like mobile. Is that, you see this right here? Mm -hmm. I'll watch it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like she's... <laughs> so uh, little things like that, you know, just... Uh, In retrospect, and looking back, where here's a young young kid who was just always around, bouncing around, just doing his own thing, and learning from that process, and, and learning about just how, how to say thank you and, and how to behave. Uh, it, it really it really paid off, and uh, you know hung around with with, with, uh, with, with a lot of gang folks. Had opportunity to uh, understand the uh, interculturalization, so uh, it, which, which is uh, so important because I, I was uh, my heritage is, is, is I'm, I'm, a, I'm a mestizo, but I also had contact with other folks and and learning about culture is, is important because uh, it opened a lot of doors. I was with uh, the uh, Dennis Banks the, the, that the, that that movement. Uh, my good friend passed away a couple years ago, uh, Russell Means. Uh, I met uh, several years ago, and then I spent a lot of time in Santa Cruz with uh, with Native Images. Native Images is a uh, is a studio dedicated to people who are doing some form of uh, Native uh, culture. Oh dear, my favorite piece. Well, I'm trying to think. What would it be? The working woman, the one in there with the boots. The, oh, the lady with the boots. Yeah. Because those were my boots. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty neat. Lady in the workplace. Anything I have that I discard, I do not want anymore. I let him see it first. And if he can use it, then he can have it. <laughs> Which works out pretty good. The only criteria is when I give it to him it has to leave the house it can't stay in the house and that works out fine too yeah so now I'm, I'm just I'm just taking it easy uh, uh, paying attention uh, to, uh, to my bones I, I'm still doing my own gardening I don't have a gardener, you know, and not for anything. I look young, but I'm pushing 80. So the thing is that uh, I get up every morning, I look at the grain factory, there's all my trees, everything, and, and, then, and then I pick out the, the particular job.
I was at the camp over in uh, Scotts Valley uh, doing things with uh, kids who were maybe from the Los Angeles area who were there for rehab and then they, they would bring a team of us in there to uh, share art uh, uh, with the youngsters you know and uh, understand the, the, the process of uh, you know creating something and I remember I had this one young man he's about 19 and uh, he was telling me that he was all excited because his folks are coming from uh, Los Angeles area. They're going to bring him uh, uh, some some shoes and a skateboard and this and that. that. And I said, hey, I said, did you ever think about uh, giving a gift to your parents? He goes, oh, no, they have a lot of money, you know, and this and that. I said, let me tell you something. Let's make a little something for your parents. And he goes, really? I said, yeah, let's make some. I made him a little assemblage piece, you know. His folks came, and I can tell the nice, nice people, you know. And but they're dealing with the situation with the with the, with the young man. The, the parents Parents Day, they came, and uh, he 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 had the gift, and he gave it to him. And and they, they they were like, "Honey, honey, this is for us." He says, "Yeah, well, my mentor, uh, uh, Ray Magsley, uh and I introduced myself." And uh, the, you know, he said, he said, yeah, well, so and so they opened it up, you know. Oh, it was beautiful, you know. They painted, you know, had to paint a little bit, uh, added things, glued things on, and they had tears in their eyes, and they just could not believe that's the first time they had to receive a gift from from their son, you know. And I just sort of stepped away, and then they, they, they hugged and everything. But it it was neat because I think uh, when in doubt. Put the pack on your back and discover yourself. You know, just just discover yourself and then uh, and, and then see what life's about. 